All right, here are the notes for variation functions, 8.1, or so we're going on to chapter 8. And we want to solve problems involving direct, inverse, joint, and combined variation. A lot of this could be like kind of mini wordy, word problems, so kind of be careful on that. Make sure you read carefully. Okay, so here we got, we have direct variation, which is a special linear function written as y equals k times x. In all these, you're going to see all these functions or variation functions, you're going to see a k, and the k is called the constant of variation. Um, it's kind of like a slope, but we're, we're trying to think of it differently for the other types. Your key words there that you would be looking for are y varies directly as x. So every time you see that, you're using that formula, y equals k times x, or whatever variables, something k times something. Okay, so here we have an example. y varies directly as x when y is equal to 14, um, or when y is equal to 14, x is equal to 3.5. Write the function. So what we have to do here is we're going to find the function. To do that, we first have to find the k. So let's first off, because it says varies directly, we're going to say y equals k times x. Plug the numbers in where they belong, 14 in place of the y, 3.5 in place of the x. And then you're saying here, how do I solve for k? Well, how do you get rid of multiplication? You just divide. So 14 divided by 3.5 would be 4. So now my new function, put the 4 in place of the k, and say y is equal to 4 times x. And there you go, you've answered the question. You wrote the function. The examples, they do ask you to graph. I'm not going to be concerned with the graphing, but you can see there that would be the graph. A direct variation goes is a straight line, it's a special linear function that goes right through the middle. There should never be a plus or a minus. We're only doing multiplication or division here. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, of direct variation. The perimeter P of a regular dodecagon varies directly as the side length S. And P is equal to 18 inches when S is equal to 1.5 inches. Find S when P is equal to 75 inches. Okay, so now you have to realize how this reads. The perimeter P varies directly. Okay, so we're saying P is like the Y. So it's going to be P equals K times because we're saying varies directly. Varies directly is making you think k times. k times s. Okay, plug the numbers where they belong. So 18 and 1.5. Then you can divide 18 by 1.5 and you get 12. Okay, so that's the k. Put that back into the function, 12s. And then read the question. It says, find S when P is equal to 75 inches. So instead of a 70, uh, P or 75, I'm going to put the P in its place. Or 75 in place of P, sorry. And so now I'm saying 75 is equal to 12S. Divide 75 by 12, and you get S is equal to 6.25 inches. And again, if you have any questions, make sure you're n making note of this on your, uh, your notes, so that way you can ask me on Monday. All right, a joint variation is a special, or it's a direct variation of three variables. In other words, it means like you combined a couple of them together. So like here, you're saying y is equal to k times x times z. So a joint variation is having, it's got three variables. Um, and again, you would still probably still have to find the, the, um, the constant of variation. So here's an example. The area uh, A of a triangle varies jointly as the base B and height H. And A is equal to 12 meters squared when B is equal to 6 meters and H is equal to 4 meters. Find B when A is equal to 36 meters squared and H is equal to 8 meters. Okay, let's start off with the formula. The area A, so this is going to act like the Y. This A is going to act like the Y. Varies jointly, okay? That means I'm going to say K times. That's like the varies jointly or varies directly. Base B, that's like my X. Z is like my H. 
Okay, so we would plug those in, and this is the formula we would come up with. Um, so we're going to do this as part one, and we're going to help find the k. a is equal to k times b times h. Plug in the numbers that they gave you for the first set. So 12 is equal to k times 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. So k, so I have 12 is equal to 24k. Divide again. Now, keep in mind, be careful. I am saying 12 divided by 24. Sometimes some of y'all like to flip it around and say, oh, it's a big number by the little number. No. Okay, 12 divided by 24 would tell me that k is equal to 1 half. Which, by the way, y'all should know that as a formula. Area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. See, I just helped y'all find it through a different way. Okay, part two. Now we're going to put that into that k. Remember, that's 1 half base times height, um, which I wrote there like that. Now plug in the new numbers, 36, 1 half, times 8, and again, I'm trying to find the b, half of 8 is 4, and then if I divide by 4, I get b is equal to 9. Okay, so now let's look at an inverse variation. This is one where you have to be kind of careful. And again, it would say that it varies inversely. Y varies inversely as X. And this is one where as one variable decreases, the other one increases. And we can show this by the formula Y equals K times X. So kind of keep in mind, again, if I say something like Y... That was horrible, right? Let's try that again. Y varies inversely as x okay if you see that you know you're dealing with k divided by in this case x okay so here's an example y varies inversely as x and y is equal to 3 when x is equal to 8 find the inverse function so again just with the words varies inversely I know I'm saying y is equal to k divided by x they give me some numbers, so I'm going to plug them in where they belong. 3 in place of the y, 8 in place of the x. How do you get rid of divide? You multiply. So all you got to do is multiply 8 times 3, and there's your k. k is equal to 24. So from there, I can say, put the k, in, or the 24 in place of the k, and I now have a specific equation of y is equal to 24 over x. Okay, so here is number, um, example five. You can find that on page 571. So uh, please, you know, make sure you look at that problem because I'm not going to write that one out. It's actually kind of long to write out. But it says the time that it takes, time T that it takes for a group of volunteers to construct a house varies inversely as the number of volunteers, V. Mm -hmm. If 20 volunteers can build a house in 62 and a half hour working hours, how many volunteers would be needed to build a house in 50 working hours? Okay, so we're saying here that, and notice it mentions time first. So that's going to be time equals, T equals, <clears throat> varies inversely, <coughs> K divided by, and then what's another uh, variable they mentioned? Volunteers, K divided by V. So T is time, V is volunteers. Then they tell you that if there are 20 people building the house, it takes 62 and a half hours. So let's put the numbers where they belong, 62 and a half equals k divided by v, so k divided by 20, then multiply. 20 times 62 and a half gives you 1,250. That means then your specific function is t is equal to 1,250 divided by v. Now from there I could find anything I needed to. In this case they're asking how many volunteers do I need to finish it in 50 hours? Well, put the 50 where it belongs, 50 in place of the t equals 1,250 over V. Now this is very easy to solve. All you got to do is switch the V and the 50. So you're now saying V is equal to 1,250 divided by 50. Then you got your answer which is 25 volunteers. So you need five more people so you can finish faster. Yay! Okay, to identify if a table is a direct or inverse uh, variation, 
multiply or divide the x and y's. Um, so specifically, you have to make sure you, you kind of understand here. Um, since y is equal to k times x in a direct variation, if you divide and they always give you the same answer, the x's and y's, then that's a uh, direct variation. If you multiply and they always give you the same answers, that's an inverse variation. Okay, so let's give an example here. Okay, so here's my example. X um, is 3, 8, and 10. Y is 9, 24, and 30. Okay, and again, we're going to try to either multiply or divide. That means multiply the X's and Y's or divide the X's and Y's. Multiplica if it works in multiplication, it's an inverse. If it works through division, it's a direct. Okay, so I start off, let's say, multiplying. 3 times 9 is 27. 8 times 24 is 192. Okay, whoops, let's go back there. Okay, since those two are not equal, 27 and 192, those two answers, it can't be inverse. So then I'm going to try direct. So I'm going to start dividing. And it really doesn't matter which order you divide them in, but usually y divided by x would be preferable. So I'm going to say 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Then I'm going to do 24 divided by 8, which is 3. Then I'm going to do 30 divided by 10, which is 3. Since they're all the same, this is a direct variation. Okay, That's all you would have to ask. Now, if you had switched over and said 3 over 9, 8 over 24, and 10 over 3, you would have still said it's direct variation. You just probably would have gotten the wrong K because this 3 right here represents the K. Okay, so let's look at another. So here's another example, and I'm going to try to multiply again. 4 and a half times 8 uh, is 36. 12 times 3 is 36. 2 times 18 is 36. So since all three of those multiply to be the same thing, I know it's an inverse. I don't need to check the other one. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which one you try first, but you can just try. And if neither of those work, then the answer would be neither. So keep that in mind that I can give you a neither. Okay, the last type of variation is a combined variation. A combined variation is both direct and inverse. Y is equal to K times Z divided by X. So make sure you have that. Look at example number seven that's found on page 572 in the book. It talks about the volume of a gas that inverse, varies inversely as the pressure P and directly as the temperature T. So the varies inversely means that's the one that gets divided by. The directly is the one that multiplies. And so you can see here, the volume is equal to K times T divided by P. Okay. Then we plug in our numbers that we need to to answer the questions. I'm going in order as they were given to me to find the K, which was 0 0.05. So my function is 0 0.05 T over P. Then it asks to find the new pressure. And again, plugging in the numbers where they belong, plugging in the numbers where they belong, um, I had 7.5 is equal to 0.05 times 350 over P, because it was asking, the question asked for the pressure. Again, Double look, look on the book to make sure you see this so that way you can follow along with what I've done. Since I'm looking for P, I'm going to switch those two, and the 7.5 and the P, and then all i got to do is type in my calculator and I'll get an answer of 2.3. So my pressure should be about 2.3 according to this atmospheres, but I'd be happy if you can get the number. So those are the 8.1 notes. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you write them in on your paper and kind of go from there. And yes, if you're wondering who the person was that didn't notice that I was talking at the time, that would be Juan, and who will probably hear his own voice when he listens to these notes.